in theory, lithium metal solid state batteries could be the solution to everything we need. Fast charging, I mean, very fast charging, affordable solid state batteries that have incredible energy density, but there are some problems preventing the commercialization of this type of battery chemistry. However, researchers have just discovered a way that we may be able to fix these problems and commercialize lithium metal solid state batteries. And it comes down to simply adding one small ingredient to the mix. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to all the new subscribers. It's great to have you. Welcome back, everyone else. A collaboration between German and Chinese scientists has discovered that adding a nitrate-based additive solves the biggest problems with lithium metal solid state batteries. Interesting engineering says that researchers from the University of Beirut, Germany, with partners from China, have made a massive breakthrough in battery technology. Using an innovative nitrate-based additive, they have successfully developed a new solid state lithium metal battery that is both stable and potentially long lasting. This, the research team says, underscores the importance of molecular design in creating effective additives for quasi solid state electrolytes. There's been a huge amount of investment and work, but most of it's been secret and quiet in China over the last 10 years on solid state battery technology. We're just starting to learn that companies have been working on them for a long time in China. We've known about it in the US. We've known about it apparently happening in Japan. We don't have any proof of that, but the, the Japanese car companies say that they're doing it. However, Chinese car companies and battery companies are now just starting to reveal some of their solid state battery work, and it is very impressive. Professor Dr. Francesco Tucci, the chair of electrode design for electrochemical energy systems at the University of Beirut, collaborated with researchers from China to resolve incompatibility issues between lithium nitrate and dioxalane, or DOL, in quasi solid state battery electrolytes by integrating a novel or new nitrate-based additive. This is a big development. Now, people don't realize, but solid-state battery technology has been taking longer to produce than what we expected it to. And the key reason is that solid-state batteries have some major problems with actually dying early or you know losing capacity after being charged a number of times meaning their cycle life is just too short to commercialize them that's one of the problems that researchers here were trying to fix and one of the reasons this was caused is because of incompatibility issues that made batteries difficult to create or scale to production the team's discovery enables the development of solid state lithium metal batteries that are very very safe or basically, if you have a car crash, it's almost extremely unlikely for them to catch fire. And therefore, they'd be much safer than today's lithium batteries, even than lithium ion phosphate batteries. And of course, orders of magnitude safer than driving a gasoline or diesel powered car. Durability is an issue though. And adding nitrate makes these batteries more durable and easier to produce while maintaining the manufacturing methods used for conventional liquid batteries. In their experiments, the researchers tried making different versions of these batteries and found that a particular type, the lithium sulfur cell, performed incredibly well. Lithium sulfur batteries have the potential for very, very high energy density, up to five times the energy density of today's batteries. This means they could in theory, store a huge amount of energy for their weight, meaning that EVs in the future could very well weigh half of what EVs weigh today. This is extremely valuable though, more, not so much for cars, I mean, it's good for cars, but much more so for aviation, for drones, and of course, EVs where you need more range. Apart from the high energy density, sulfur is very cheap and it's extremely abundant as well. And this makes lithium sulfur batteries very cost effective compared to other battery technologies if the technological challenges are fixed now that's the issue the technological challenges 
that are preventing this cheap, affordable, and extremely high energy density battery from actually being mass manufactured. Until now, lithium sulfur cells have suffered from poor cycle life and stability. The battery's solid state nature ensures a high level of safety while their manufacturing remains straightforward, said Professor Chuchi. We demonstrated the approach's universality by creating various types of lithium metal batteries. Notably, the manufactured pouch lithium sulfur cell exhibits superior performance compared to previously documented pouch lithium sulfur cells. The team introduced a new additive, glycol dimetrate, which is specifically designed to enable the polymerization of DOL. The research team showed that concomitant with polymerization, forming a nitrogen-rich solid electrolyte interface layer suppresses detrimental parasitic reactions and increases the battery's efficiency. Based on these findings, several battery cells were developed. Among them, lab-scale button-type cells could be charged and discharged more than 2,000 times. A 1.7 amp hour lithium sulfur pouch cell with a high energy density of 304 watts per kilo and stable cycling was also manufactured. These batteries have one big advantage though. They're very simple and cost effective to produce. This discovery is therefore a big step forward in battery technology. It does show the importance of designing molecules correctly to make better batteries. This study underscores the importance of molecular structured design in creating effective additives for quasi solid state batteries. It represents a significant advancement in the practical feasibility of employing poly DOL based quasi solid state electrolytes in lithium metal batteries. And what this all means is that solid state batteries with around 304 watts per kilo of energy density could be commercially manufactured at an affordable price within the next few years. But is that really the advantage that it sounds like? Well, unfortunately, no, it's not. I mean, this product in and of itself, adding nitrite to a solid state battery and being able to have the nitrate essentially give the battery a much longer life, it does make the concept of solid state batteries much more feasible, but does it make them more likely to be cost effective? Well, sure, yes, it will, but nowhere near as cost effective as it needs to be to compete. Why do I mean by that? Well, CATL, the world's largest battery company, are the benchmark we have to compare products against. CATL famously, when asked by car company NEO to manufacture solid state batteries, said no, it doesn't need to. There's no reason to do so. They said all we need to do is continue to improve upon the technology we already have, which is what they've done. Now they've produced lithium ion phosphate batteries that have around about 30% less energy density than these batteries. However, they have a much longer cycle life, probably three times the life, and probably cost about 80 to 90% less to manufacture. However, they also have a new battery, which is kind of a hybrid battery, a hybrid between an LFP battery and a lithium ternary battery. It combines manganese, phosphate, and lithium in order to have a battery with higher energy density than LFP and most pretty much all of the advantages, plus better cold weather performance. Those batteries have an energy density of around about 235 watts per kilo. So we're looking at still around 15 to 20% less than solid state batteries. However, CATL's third battery, its condenser battery as it's known, I'm sure it'll have a different name by the time it's actually being released to the public, is said to have an energy density of closer to 400 watts per kilo. It's not solid state, and therefore it shouldn't be astronomically expensive to produce. But here's the kicker. CATL is an actual battery company. They produce actual products. They're not just researchers, they're manufacturers. And they say that they will be manufacturing that product. That therefore is the benchmark you must compare yourself against. 400 watts per kilo of energy density. That means lithium sulfur batteries with a theoretical or actual real energy density of 300 watts per kilo would need to be significantly cheaper than CATL's new condenser batteries with 400 watts per kilo. Will they be? Highly, highly unlikely. 
This joint venture between, basically between Germany and China is nice, but it's not really all that relevant to helping commercialize solid state batteries. But those are my thoughts on this research. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching.